Hi. So we're going to have to do the second part of. Uh, <laughs> I bet you're wondering what this is. This is a belt that's been sort of like wrapped around my head, and we used another belt to create a sort of vertical uh, aspect and put a tie in here, just through the loop here between these two parts and at the back. So it makes me look like a sort of mental dude doing a film, which is exactly what it is. <laughs> So there we are. Then, um, so we have to work out then, he said he learned to pilot a plane and basically in the course of this life I have had a great many encounters with great many people who have been concerned with matters of consequence. I have lived a great deal among grown-ups and have seen them Intimately close at hand. Just trying to find my coffee here. So, anyhow. Oh. And that hasn't much improved my opinion of them. Whenever I met one of them, who seemed to me at all clear-sighted, I tried the experiment of showing him my drawing. Number one, which I had always kept, I would try to find out so if this was a person of true understanding, but whoever it was, he or she, would always say, that is a hat. Then I would never talk to that person about boa constrictors or primeval forest or stars. I would bring myself down to his level, I would talk to him about bridge and golf and policy, politics and neckties. Oh, not ties. Yeah, it's a bit sort of surprising. Yeah. Hello. <laughs> I'm so silly. Right. So I lived my life alone without anyone that I could really talk to until I had an accident with my plane in the desert of Sahara six years ago. Ah. Something was broken in my engine, and as I had with me neither mechanic nor any passengers, I set myself to attempt the difficult repairs. All alone, it was a question of life or death for me. I had scarcely enough drinking water to last a week. First night, then, I went to sleep on the sand, a thousand miles from any human habitation. I was more isolated than a shipwrecked sailor on a raft in the middle of the ocean. Thus, you can imagine my amazement. When, at sunrise, I was awakened by an odd little voice. It said, If you please, draw me a sheep. What? Draw me a sheep. <coughs> I jumped to my feet, completely thunderstruck. I blinked. My eyes hard. Hey, what's going on? I looked carefully all around me, <laughs> and I saw a most extraordinary small person who stood there examining me with great seriousness. Hmm. What's going on? Here you may see the best portrait that later I was able to make of him, but my drawing is certainly very much less charming than its model. That, however, is not my fault. The grown-ups discouraged me in my painting painter's career when I was six years old. And I never learned to draw anything except bows from the outside and bows from the inside. Now I stared at this sudden apparition with my eyes fairly start starting out of my head in astonishment. Remember, I had crashed in the desert a thousand miles from any inhabited region, and yet my little man seemed neither to be straying uncertainly among the sands, nor to be fainting from fatigue, or hunger, or thirst, or fear. Nothing about him gave any suggestion of a child lost in the middle of the desert, a thousand miles from any human habitation. When at last I was able to speak, I said to him, But what are you doing here? And in answer he repeated, very slowly, as if he were speaking of a matter of great consequence. If you please, draw me a sheep. When a mystery is too overpowering, one dare not disobey, absurd as it might not seem to as it might seem to be to me, 
a thousand miles from any human habitation, and in danger of death I took out my pocket, a sheet of paper, and my fountain pen. But then I remembered how my studies had been concentrated on geography, history, arithmetic, and grammar, and I told the little chap, a little crossly too, that I did not know how to draw, he answered me. That doesn't matter. Draw me a sheep. Okay. Well, did he do it or not? He did indeed. Here is the best portrait that later I was able to make of him. But I had never drawn a sheep, so I drew for him one of the two pictures I had drawn so often. It was one of a boa constructed from the outside, and I was astounded to hear the little fellow greeted with, No, no, no. I do not want an elephant inside a boa constructor. A boa constructor is a very dangerous creature, and an elephant is very cumbersome. Where I live, everything is very small. What I need is a sheep. Draw me a sheep. So then I made a drawing. <laughs> 